Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Stetson. Welcome to our fall graduate celebration. I'm Chris Petruskevich. I'm the Dean of Stetson, and I want to thank you for being here to celebrate such a special evening with our December graduates. So today uh, culminates for them a lifetime of learning, uh, except for the bar exam that's coming up, but a lifetime of learning uh, in which you have the opportunity now to dramatically change the lives of people for the better. You know, one of the things that we focus on in law school uh, is the rule of law, and you play a, pr a critical role in maintaining the rule of law and ensuring that we continue to improve the world around us. A, a big part of what we have done uh, at Stetson is make public service uh, not only a passion, but our passion, and you have helped to pioneer us in the state for leading the way in pro bono service for our state. I hope you take that with you and continue to do that as you begin your practice. So today, as you begin to make legal history, not only as leaders in our communities, but now lawyers in our communities, we are delighted with your professionalism, ethics, and the way that you will define us future in the future as a Stetson lawyer. So congratulations to all of you. We're delighted you're here, and we're delighted you're part of Stetson. So there are a number of people I'd like to introduce, and many of them are going to say hello in just a few, mi a few minutes. Dr. Noel Painter is our Executive Vice President and Provost. We're supposed to clap now. The current chair of our Board of Overseers is Benjamin Hill IV. Nathaniel Hatcher is President of the Stetson Lawyers Association. And we're delighted that Professor Emeritus Lamar Woodard is also here with us tonight. So the law school uh, does operate through a wonderful group of assistant and associate deans who are also here tonight. So associate dean Susan Roselle. Associate dean for student engagement, Stephanie Vaughn. Associate Dean for Faculty and Strategic Initiatives, Daryl Wilson. <laughs> Assistant Dean for Student Affairs, Tammy Bryant. <laughs> and our Assistant Dean for Development and Alumni Relations, Kevin Hughes. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Painter for greetings on behalf of the President uh, and the Provost. Thank you, Dean Petruskevich. I always appreciate a good long pause after someone mentions my name and then lukewarm applause <laughs> happens. That's wonderful. Another way to do it is to mention someone's name and just to have one giant <laughs> together. So I could say, welcome to the podium, Dean Petruskevich, and we could all go <laughs> that. That's about, uh, that's about the same, I'd say. <laughs> well. Welcome, everybody, and on behalf of the university and President Libby and myself, I say thank you to you graduates who a while back chose to make a difference, to have a different kind of education at Stetson University. I think that's an impressively bold step, and we appreciate that you have made it and that you have been so diligent to reach this stage. And faculty, I say the same thing to you for being bold in the way that you educate minds to make a difference in this world. I say thank you for that as well. Uh, legal education, as I've come into the position I'm in right now, continues to amaze me in the way that it touches my life. My son is a, a freshman at University of Richmond right now studying math and physics, and he's a Spanish minor. He loves the Spanish language. And as part of two upper division Spanish courses, he has a good deal of community service that he has to do. So as a freshman at that institution, 700 miles away from us, he's going out and having opportunities at a legal facility there to interact with Spanish-speaking uh, clientele who need legal assistance, working with lawyers and people who, uh, who need our help. And I think that part of your education as a Stetson lawyer has taught you to value the, the part of education that is giving back. In fact, I feel like that is 
One of the things that binds this university together at all four of our campuses, whether in, we're in Tampa, Gulfport, Orlando, or DeLand, Stetson students give back after they graduate. And so I encourage you to continue that tradition, to value that part of what Stetson has taught you. Again, I say thank you, and I say congratulations on all of your accomplishments. Good evening. My name is Ben Hill, and it's my privilege to serve as the current chair of the College of Law's Board of Overseers. On behalf of our board, I extend congratulations and greetings uh, to our soon-to-be graduates. Um, our board is largely um, uh, comprised of uh, folks who are Stetson Law alums, and we do advisory work to support the dean and obviously the College of Law as a whole. Uh, we're an active and diverse group. Uh, we wear many hats, those of representatives, ambassadors, and stewards of this great place. Uh, again, nearly all of us are Stetson Law alums, uh, so we know the seats where you're sitting in right now. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, and we certainly know that your journey here is coming to an end, but that's a great thing. Myself, I'm a 97, 1997 College of Law graduate. Uh, that's right, 20 years ago, I sat, you know, very similar seats to where you're sitting right now. Um, and before you brand me as an old timer, uh, I, I will tell you that, uh, just so you know, I did have property with, pro with then professor, now Dean Wilson. Um, I did have Civ Pro with Professor Bean. I did have <coughs> um, uh, torts with Professor Lake. Uh, and given that he is your selected faculty speaker tonight, yes, I had environmental law with Professor Gardner back in the day. Now, he was only 12 years old back then. <laughs> I mean, he, he looks only about 30-something right now, and I tell you, it's just not fair. Um, but seriously, as you'll soon see for yourselves, uh, the years after law school, they go quickly. Uh, they go quickly in part because you're going to work really hard. Uh, they go quickly because you've got a lot of service in front of you. Uh, it's a privilege, obviously, to serve others. And I think Stetson lawyers do that better than any other lawyers that I know, and I've known uh, a lot of lawyers around the state. Uh, your opportunities uh, you know, will, to serve uh, are gonna be many, and we certainly encourage you to answer the call when it is time to serve. Uh, serving others is tough, but again, you're uniquely situated as Stetson lawyers to do so. As a Stetson lawyer, I encourage you to serve whenever and however you can. In addition to serving your clients, I would really urge you to serve in your community. Serve your charitable organizations that are nearby. Serve your churches, synagogues, or places of worship. Serve in your neighborhood associations. And please, if I could really uh, encourage one thing, please serve in our profession. Uh, whether it's your local bar association, state bar, or if you have the opportunities, uh, any type of national organization. There are a lot of wonderful uh, groups out there, and trust me, they need Stetson lawyers serving in them. That service obviously not only promotes and enhances our profession, but it also promotes and enhances this great law school, Stetson. And finally, don't forget about this place. Uh, stay in touch with your classmates and with your professors. Use the many platforms that are now available to stay connected with Stetson. And again, when the opportunity knocks, and it will knock, come and give back. Come back to campus. Serve however you can, whether it's judging a trial competition or just coming back and, and maybe guest lecturing in a class. Uh, do that. Again, on behalf of our board, uh, congratulations and good luck as you complete your privileged chapter as a Stetson Law student and transition into that even more privileged chapter of being a Stetson lawyer. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. My name is Nathan Hatcher. I have the privilege of serving as the president of the Stetson Lawyers Alumni Association it's my honor tonight to welcome each of you as new alumni. 
Uh, before, before I speak directly to the graduates, I want to speak to the friends and the family who are able to join us tonight. Thank you so much for being here. We know what, what a, such a big role you play in our graduate success. And I, I think it might be appropriate for our graduates, if you wouldn't mind maybe standing up and turning around and giving our friends and, your friends and family a good round of applause here. So thank you so much for, for joining us tonight uh, to celebrate this wonderful achievement. To our graduates, well done and congratulations. Take pride in this accomplishment. We know the hard wor work that it took and we know how hard you will continue to work to promote and improve the legal system in your community and wherever you may find yourself on your career path. As you take that next step, as you join the legal profession, remember that you are not just becoming a lawyer, you are becoming a Stetson lawyer. And that means something. That means something very special to us Stetson lawyer alumni. You are joining a group of highly regarded professionals across the state, locally, and across the country. A group of professionals who pride themselves on hard work, dedication to our clients and our community, and the highest standards of honesty and professionalism. It is a high bar, but we know that each of you will rise to it. On behalf of the Stetson Lawyers Alumni Association, I welcome you as new alumni. Our alumni development office here does a wonderful job of giving us opportunities to network and connect throughout our alumni community. So I, as, as Mr. Hill did as well, I, I encourage you to stay involved. Come back to Stetson, attend your alumni events, and I'll look forward to seeing you there. Congratulations and thank you. So this is the part of the program where we proudly recognize our graduates. So after your name is called, please come up to the front, uh, accept a gift as well as a photograph. I'd now like to introduce Associate Dean Susan Roselle and uh, Assistant Dean Tammy Bryant, who will read the graduates' names as well as their respective honors, awards, and accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is truly my pleasure to introduce to you the fall 2017 degree candidates. First, there will be some recognitions in absentia. Some of our colleagues couldn't be here tonight with us. And so, anticipating the LLM Master of Laws in Advocacy, Rochelle Marie Morisco in absentia, graduating with honors. The Master of Laws in Elder Law, also in absentia. Jonathan Davis Crick, Jason Eric Goldstein, and Thomas James Moran. Now, with us tonight, in anticipation of the Master of Laws in International Law, James Ryan Clegg. Next, it is our pleasure to present to you the fall 2017 Juris Doctor candidates. Carl Ethan Brandon. <laughs> Carl is the recipient of the Victor O. Whaley Award and president of the Black Law Students Association. Peaches Joy Camelia Brown. Peaches is a recipient of the Certificate of Concentration in Social Justice Advocacy. 
She was secretary of the Dream Defenders, a member of Phi Alpha Delta, and a member of the Black Law Student Association. She is pursuing an LLM in advocacy. Peaches would like to thank her parents and sister for their support, love, and money. She would like to send, she would like to send a special thank you for her, to her beautiful son, Princeton, for being her driving force. This is for him. They did it together. Christopher Stephen Cervalera in absentia. <laughs> Another Christopher. <laughs> Christopher Alden Covell. Christopher was a Student Bar Association representative. Trisha L. Cram with honors. <laughs> Trisha is the recipient of the Victor O. Whaley Award. Trisha wants to thank her mom for her support, encouragement, and willingness to be a juror or witness whenever needed. She also wants to thank her husband, Josh, for taking care of everything while she focused on work and law school. Without his support, she would not have been able to accomplish this milestone. Brian Matthew Courier, in absentia. Callie Lane DeVlaming, with honors. <laughs> Callie is the recipient of the E. Harris Drew Memorial Award. Callie wants to personally thank her parents, Dennis and Von Seel, for supporting her through her journey at Stetson. Chris Galloway with honors. Chris was a member of the Moot Court Board. He would like to thank his wife, Dina, and sons, Elijah and Nate, he loves you, and he couldn't have done it without you. Caitlin Mara Gibbons. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Hicks with honors. Ryan is a recipient of the William F. Blues Award, and he was a Stetson ambassador. Ryan would like to thank his fiance for all her love and support throughout his Stetson Law journey. He's sorry for the super long engagement, but now you can get married. <laughs> Nisha Rose G. Hines. Nisha Rose is the recipient of the Public Service Fellows Recognition Award, a member of the Journal of International Wildlife Law and Policy, and president of the If When How Student Organization. Nisha Rose would like to thank her mother for always believing she could overcome her obstacles, her brothers for providing comedic relief, and her friends for providing sanity and support. Most of all, she would like to thank her son, Colin, without whom none of this would ever have come to pass. Spencer Jack Jorgensen. Spencer has performed over 100 hours of community service through the VITA tax prep program. Habitat for Humanity, and St. Vincent de Paul's Soup Kitchen in downtown St. Petersburg. Andrew Joseph Lorenz. Andrew would like to thank his father and sister for always supporting him. Jesse MacGyver Morse in absentia. 
<laughs> Shaheen Nori. Shaheen is the recipient of the Walter Mann Award and the William F. Blues Pro Bono Service Award and a member of the Stetson Journal of Advocacy in the Law and the Dispute Resolution Board. Shaheen completed a circuit judicial externship and a federal judicial externship. He also completed over 300 hours of pro bono, writing appellate briefs on behalf of the Florida Attorney General. Shaheen sends special thanks to his parents, his family, and his remarkable Stetson professors. Stephanie Michelle Oliver. And Mary Joellen Wald. Certificate of Concentration in Elder Law. Mary is the recipient of the Raphael Steinhardt Award and the William F. Blues Pro Bono Service Award. As a member of the Dispute Resolution Board, she was awarded Best Advocate in the 2016 Negotiation Competition, was Student Bar Association 2016-2017 Committee Chair and 2015-2016 Co-Chair for Barrister's Ball, and was the 2016-2017 Healthcare Law Association Vice President. Mary also completed the Advanced Legal Writing and Communication Skills Development Program. Mary thanks her parents, family, and friends for their support. Thank you, Dean Rosell and, and Dean Bryan. One of the uh, most enjoyable parts of our fall graduate celebration uh, is the graduates get to elect their speaker from our faculty. And this year they made a wonderful choice in asking Professor Gardner to deliver the address. So Professor Gardner is the director of the Institute of Biodiversity Law and Policy and an internationally renowned expert in wetland law and policy and has advised the government of Oman regarding wetland policy, co-authoring a US Supreme Court amicus brief on behalf of environmental scientists. He has lectured in Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, and South America, and is the current chair of the Scientific and Technical Review Panel of the Ramsar Convention, an intergovernmental wetland treaty of 168 countries. In 2006, he won the National Wetlands Award for Education and Outreach, and since joining our faculty, he has received twice the university's Holly, Homer and Dolly Hand Award for Excellence in Faculty Scholarship and been voted as Outstanding Professor by the student body. Professor Gardner has served as Director of our Graduate International Programs, Associate Dean, Vice Dean, and Interim Dean, and you made a great choice in asking Professor Gardner to speak. Good evening. Thank you, thank you so much, Dean, for the kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be here, and, and it, it really is a, a great honor to be chosen by the graduating students to, to speak with you tonight. I know you're probably expecting about a 35 to 40, 30 to 45 minute uh, address on the importance of wetlands and the, <laughs> and the benefits that swamps, bogs, and marshes provide to people. But, but I'm sorry, Stephanie, you're going to be disappointed. In, in, instead, however, I, I, want to, I want to talk about uh, taxes, <laughs> nuclear weapons, and Tina Fey. I'll get there eventually. But first, first, congratulations. Congratulations to the graduates. What a wonderful day to celebrate your accomplishments. Uh, it's an important milestone, whether you've earned an LLM or a JD, whether you are following the path of a parent, or whether you'll be the first in your family to become a lawyer. 
And a special congratulations to those of you who were part-time students. Law school is challenging enough, but it's even more so when you have to balance a job. So you all have my respect, and for you administrative law aficionados, I'm not talking about Skidmore respect. I mean real respect. That was for you, Shaheen. All right, it's, it's, great. it's, great, to see, it's great to see the families here. Um, I was, in my family, I was the first to, to go to law school. I went to law school, became a professor, and now I teach the law. My sister went to law school, became a litigator, and she now practices law. My brother is a special agent with the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, NCIS. He carries a gun, and he is the law. <laughs> you like that, right? Now, none of us, none of us, of course, made it alone. We had help. Family, friends, colleagues, mentors. Anyone who says, I can do it alone, or some variant like, I alone can fix it, is divorced from reality and fundamentally misunderstands the human condition. We're not precocial animals. We're not relatively self-sufficient upon birth, like sea turtles or seahorses or sharks. We need help throughout our lives to thrive and to achieve our goals. And one of the reasons I, I, I really like this ceremony is because the graduates have an opportunity to thank the people who have helped them along the way. I am not a particularly self-reflective person, uh, but this does cause me to reflect upon who I am thankful to. And I am very appreciative and, and, and very thankful to the American taxpayer. My family, too. My family. My family, yes. But really, the American taxpayer. As Oliver Wendell Holmes said, taxes are what we pay for civilized society. And it was the American taxpayer that paid for my education through an Army ROTC scholarship. That scholarship gave me the foundation for my legal education. So to, to those of you who contributed to my education, I thank you very much. And after law school, I continued to be paid by the American taxpayer when I served for about five years in the Pentagon as an attorney in the Army General Counsel's office. While there, in the early, mid-1990s, I had a small role in the Nun Luger program. It was also known as the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program. It was a, a post-Cold War initiative to reduce nuclear dangers. Now, students of history we will recall that uh, the Soviet Union dissolved toward the end of 1991, and at that time, there were nuclear weapons and nuclear infrastructure on the territory of four newly independent states, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. And the concern was that this nuclear material, if not properly safeguarded, might be sold or transferred to a rogue state or terrorist organization. Senator, San, Senator San Nunn, a Democrat from Georgia, and Senator Richard Lugar, a Republican from Indiana, had the foresight to develop a program under which the United States provided assistance to those countries for the safe and secure dismantlement of nuclear weapons and nuclear infrastructure. We had to negotiate international agreements to specify the terms under which this dismantlement assistance would be provided. And in return, Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan agreed to declare themselves to be non-nuclear weapon states under the Non-Proliferation Treaty. So as a young attorney, I, I had 17 or 18 negotiating trips to the former Soviet Union, or the FSU, as, as we called it. So, so to me, FSU only means one thing. It's former, former Soviet Union. I bring up the Nunn-Luger program for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it was an example of bipartisanship, something we could use a lot more of today. But more importantly, Senators Nunn and Luger took political risks to work together on a controversial program. Although the Nunn-Luger program has now been viewed as a success, it was not popular at the time. We were in a recession, we were closing military bases at home, and they were attacked by critics. 
Why are we spending taxpayer money in the former Soviet Union when we have unemployed veterans here at home? The senators explained that this was defense by other means, that it was in the short-term and long-term interests of the United States, and ultimately they convinced their colleagues to support the program. Senators Nunn and Luger had the courage to fight for an unpopular program because they believed it was the right thing to do. And I urge you, as you embark on your legal careers, to do the same. Have the courage to work with people with whom you disagree. Take risks. Fight for what you think is right. And as Stetson Law graduates, you'll have the opportunity and the tools to do so at the local, state, national, or even international level. The opportunities will present themselves. You just have to be prepared to say yes. In the classic book, Bossy Pants by Tina Fey, <laughs> she writes that the rules of improvisation, improv comedy, can change your life. The first rule of improv is to always agree and say yes. The second rule is to say yes and. You can't simply agree. You have to add something of your own. You have to contribute. Indeed, Tina Fey explains that it's your responsibility to contribute to the discussion. This principle to say yes and can be of tremendous value to you in your legal careers, but it benefits society as well. You'll have many opportunities to say yes and. People will ask you to do something, to get involved, to contribute. Ben Hill asked you tonight, right? Um, it, 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 it may be to, to, to take a, a pro bono case or to serve as a guardian ad litem, to mentor a child, to participate in service organizations. And that's actually how I got involved with, with the Ramsar Convention, the wetland treaty that the dean mentioned. I, I was minding my own business at a wetlands conference when the organizer uh, uh, told me about the National Ramsar Committee and asked if I was interested. And I said, yes. And I'd be willing to contribute my time. And that eventually led to my working on wetland issues at the international level, which has been immensely rewarding to me personally and professionally. It's, it's been a tremendous experience, and, and I've learned so much from my wetland friends and colleagues around the world. So, so yes, and is it, it's a good way to go through life. Uh, and, and it can take different forms. So my friend and colleague, Professor Becky Morgan, is the perfect example. If you are Becky's friend, or if you've ever worked with her, you have heard her ask, what can I do to help? Right? It's a form of yes and. Yes, I hear your concern, and I can help. But sometimes a lawyer's response can't be yes and. Sometimes it has to be no. But sometimes, it should be no but. A good lawyer is a problem solver. A good lawyer, when appropriate, will say to a client, no, you can't do that, but you can accomplish your objective if you try this other approach. To be an effective problem solver, you really need to understand your client's objectives and concerns and your client's business. And often, you need to understand the perspective of the other side. When we were negotiating in Kiev in 1993 on an agreement to facilitate the destruction of strategic nuclear arms, we got bogged down on a minor issue involving spare parts. We were going to provide the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine certain equipment. If in the future they needed a spare part, a replacement part for that equipment, that would be their responsibility at their cost. We all agreed on that. But they wanted us to put a provision in the agreement that the U.S. government would order a U.S. company to sell them spare parts. We tried to explain that we couldn't simply order the private sector to sell them spare parts or anything, but that companies would welcome the opportunity to do so. They didn't understand our system, and we didn't understand their system. After some discussion, we began to understand their concern. At the time, they didn't have a spare parts industry. If a tractor broke, they would just take that part from some other tractor. They were concerned that if, if a part of a crane needed to be replaced, they'd have to purchase an entirely new crane. So ultimately, we were able to crack, 
craft some language that the U.S. government shall endeavor to facilitate Ukraine's purchase of spare parts or something like that, that satisfied both sides. The answer to the Ukrainians was no but. No, we can't say that, but we can say this. And it was our, our willingness to understand each other's perspectives that led to the agreement. So as you go forward in your careers, take risks to do what you think is right, even if it may be unpopular. Look for and embrace the opportunities to say yes and, and be problem solvers. Know when it's appropriate to say no but. The final bit of gratuitous advice, and it's, it's, it's really more of a plea, is that you consider government service at some stage in your career. We need good people in government. As lawyers, especially Stetson-trained lawyers, you are uniquely prepared to contribute to government, to the rule of law, and to society. Oh, and pay your fair share of taxes. <laughs> Congratulations again. Study hard for the bar exam, but pace yourself. Come back and visit. Thank you very much and good luck. So he did it. Taxes, nuclear weapons, and Tina Fey. Nicely done, Professor Gardner. Uh, I, I know I was particularly interested in that tax part, so thank you for that. So uh, before we close, there's a, a number of people that uh, I'd like to recognize, but most importantly, before we do that, uh, let's recognize our graduates. Congratulations to all of you. And, and to our faculty, uh, so many of you are here tonight. Thank you so much for that, for all the work that you've done to help prepare our students for their future. So congratulations to all of you. To our alumni who are here, thank you so much for coming back. Please continue uh, to support Stetson. Please come to our events and share about all the good things that are happening uh, at the College of Law. I'd also like to thank our wonderful staff. Uh, without them, none of these things here would happen, but also to make sure that our students, as they prepare for what happens in their futures, uh, that they work so, so much with our staffs and our various departments. So congratulations to all of you, and thank you. And I know Nathan did it a little bit earlier, but thank you to all of the supporters of our graduates. Without you, uh, none of that can happen. So as Professor Gardner says, yes and, but no but, you have graduated and you did that in large part because of the people that were here to help you. So congratulations to all of you and thank you for being here. We do have a wonderful reception for all of you across the hall in the Man Lounge. To our graduates, congratulations, good luck on the bar exam, and come back and visit us again. And thank you very much, good night. Thank you.